Good evening and welcome once again to another edition of the Truth Hour. My name is Johnny Guzman. It's a pleasure to be here again on this Monday, the 28th of May, 2012. Well, tonight's topic, the federal income tax. What is the federal income tax and do we have to pay? And for that, we've asked our good friend from Australia, Santos Bonacci, to join us once again uh, to discuss this controversial uh, topic that has landed many people in jail. So um, we're going to ask Santos to speak about this and uh, to get his, his take on this. He's, a, he's an expert in the, uh, in the field of, uh, I wouldn't say law, but in the field of, of knowledge, of uh, being a sovereign and being uh, off the grid sort of say. Uh, before we start, I'd like to remind you to uh, send us your invitations uh, to Facebook. You can find us there at QLP Multimedia. And also, you can see us live here on Facebook. And uh, for all of our previous programs, you can go into our YouTube channel, QL Television. Okay, so let's bring in our good friend Santos. Good evening, Santos. Welcome. Hey, how are you, Johnny? I'm doing great. So do you guys in Australia have a federal income tax? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we've got go ahead. every kind of tax. <laughs> but is, <laughs> is, there a, a, is, that, is that the same terminology? Because in the States, you have two types of taxes. Well, I'm speaking about uh, some states don't have a state income tax. So that alone should just tell you something, that there's something wrong there, right? In the United States and Florida, there is no state tax. Nevada, uh, and I believe California doesn't have a state tax. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure with California, but I know for a fact that Florida does not have a state tax. So you only pay federal income tax. In addition to um, the other taxes, FICA and uh, Social Security and Medicare and all that other stuff. So you, um, in the States, in the United States, you get this little document. It's called the W-2 form where it says that you've earned, let's say, $20,000, and the federal income tax withheld is about, say, $2,000. In addition to that, you have the state w uh, uh, wages, uh, taxes that have been held, which is probably about, on $20,000, it's probably about 800 bucks. In addition to that, the other other taxes. But the two main taxes is the federal income tax and the state tax. Now, uh, is that the same way over in, uh, in Australia, Santos? Yeah, pretty much. Um, we have the ATO, Australian Tax Office. So they, they are the ones that, um, that bill us, I guess. Um, and uh, it goes straight to the federal government. Um, but uh, as, as all other systems, um, this is just a recent develop in, development in history to charge income tax. Uh, originally... Um, citizens were not charged income tax, it was just the corporations that were paying the tax, you see. Uh, but then, of course, when after 1933, when um, the governments became bankrupted and uh, the uh, Federal Reserve basically uh, took over the, uh, the countries, <laughs> um, then they implemented um, income tax. I think it was actually in uh, 1913 or 1918. Uh, 1914. Anyway, <clears throat> thanks to the Federal Reserve for that. But it all goes to the banks. It doesn't actually go to the government. So, so, so in in um, I'm, I'm speaking about in the in the uh, in the United States, right? I'm more familiar with that system. Uh, but for example, in uh, most uh, South American countries, you have what's called the IVA, IVA. The, the, that's the tax, right? But you just go yep. and uh, you let's say you buy a, you go to a restaurant and you know you spend twenty bucks, they charge you uh, the EVA the the tax which is about twelve percent, but that's it, right? I'm not saying that's that's right or wrong, but that's how it goes. Um, more or less, it's the same way uh, when uh, someone works for a company, um, they have to declare whatever they made uh, every quarter or every month. Uh, or every six months, uh, but basically the same thing. You just declare, well, you know, I made ten thousand dollars and I had this amount of expenses, and uh, then they do all the the subtractions. And by the end of the, the those subtractions, if there's any money left, then you have to pay the twelve percent on that. Unlike in the U.S., where you're you're charged, I believe it's almost almost in, in total between all the taxes is about forty 
43 or 44 percent of your wages <laughs> so let's say if you make 100 bucks you know 44 dollars goes to say 40 dollars just to round it off goes to the uh to the federal and to the state and you're left with 60 bucks so um the question is is this legal santos is this income tax legal or not well it's legal it's unlawful though um everything they do is unlawful um, everything operates on a fiction and by your consent, you see. If you consent to pay tax, um, well, then go ahead and pay it. But um, if you don't consent, and this is what people need to wake up to, first of all, they need to wake up to the fact that it's unlawful to take money out of your wage because that's your uh, hard work. Earnings, Santos, but see? can you explain what, what does it mean? Because someone that may not know this terminology, what does it mean to be unlawful and legal? Can you explain that? Yeah, well, le legalities, the legal system is legislation, acts, um, bylaws, regulations, rules. So the government's the people that govern the ments, the mentals, or the mental aspect of society, the government, um, it has its rules. It does not regard the law, the law of the universe, do not injure, do not harm, do not commit fraud. It makes enactments. You see, legis Parliament gets together, they, they uh, create legislation. And legislation is the legal system, you see. And, and they have a special language. It sounds like English, but it's not. It's legalese. Okay? So they, they use their own language, and it's the language of the bar society. The bar society is basically the society of lawyers and, and um, solicitors and barristers um, all around the world who have their allegiance to that society. It's not, it's not to you, you see. So, so they have their own language and legalese and they make all these rules. And, and, and then they, they show you the, the rules, they put them out, they publish the rules, and they say these rules are not the law, but they will be, um, they have the, uh, uh, what's, what's the word? Well, I need to think about this because it's very important that we understand what their rules and legislation are all about. It's from their society, therefore they are bound to them. And, and what they tell you clearly is that they will be supported with, by the force of law. <laughs> But it's not law. You see, they tell you that their, their legalese, all their, their fictional legislature has the force of law behind it. Now, I'll get the right terminology in a minute because I'm not, I didn't expect to go down that path. But um, once it comes to me, I'll share that with you. So the force of law is not law. It's because we're, they've got all the guns. And they are the big bosses that sit on the top of the hill. And so they say, here's the legislation. It says you need to pay so much tax. You need to pay tax for drinking water. You need to pay tax for, for petrol, for electricity, for when you work, you need to give your tax, when you fart, when you burp. There's, all, there's thousands and thousands of different kinds of tax. It's getting more and more creepy and complicated. And, um, and yet pensioners and all sorts of poor people go up and you know, readily pay their, their taxes to the government because the government, they think that the government's going to make roads and hospitals for them. No, 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 no. All that gets done by private that gets done by, by us anyway. We, we build the hospital. It's man labor that builds the roads and the hospitals. Therefore, it's, it's not the taxes. Well, um, the taxes go directly 100%, not even 99%, 100% and more mm -hmm. 
to the banksters. But that's the federal it's, income tax, Santos. But because remember, there's other taxes like on cigarettes and liquor, on uh, on food and clothes, on uh, and you know, and all kinds of things. Supposedly, those taxes go to what you're saying. You know, pay for the roads and pay for the firemen and for the policemen. But the federal income tax is exactly what you're saying. That goes 100%. I'm not exactly sure about the other taxes of, you know, like I said, cigarettes or an, an, an alcohol, tobacco and all that stuff. But the federal income taxes, as you're saying, is 100%. That goes to the banksters. Um, but, 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 but the question is here, the part that you were mentioning lawful, uh, it, it's, it's uh, how do you d d differentiate that? as being lawful and, uh, and, and, and not being legal, you know, or, you know, I, I, that's the part that, that I want you to sort of clarify. I, I know you say you're, you're thinking of the word, but because, you know, there, there's, there's someone's going to <laughs> write to us and say, well, wait a minute, I'm confused. What do you mean? Legal? It's not lawful, unlawful. So that's, that's the part yeah. that, that I think we need to clarify because again, a, a lot of our audience is not, they're not well educated in, in, in the stuff that, that uh, most of our, your audience um, is used to hearing all these terms and, and, uh, and so forth. So can you clarify that again a little bit, Santos? Yeah. Um, well, nature has laws, but light, nature does not have any rules and regulations and uh, bylaws and um, legalese. The law of nature is... Um, is do not harm, and they know this. You see, we all live under the under the laws, the laws of the universe, and um, and the elites know this. So so basically, we can only break laws. Now, when they make rules, called legislation, acts, statutes, regulations, all of those things, they know that they can't make that into law. They give it the force of law because they've got all the guns. So, so those, those statutes, um, they enforce them, you see, um, but, but they have no standing. And, and in effect, only they are bound by them, not the free. If you know that you are free, you see, most people don't know, uh, well, they think they're free, but because they've contracted with the government by virtue of the birth certificate, etc., um, there's this sort of, there's this uh, obligation that they feel that they have toward the government. But, but um, the government cannot, it's not there to enforce law, it's, in, it's there to enforce their legalese, their enactments, you see, because um, those, are, those are on paper. Laws are not on paper. Laws, we know what they are, don't hurt. If I, you know, just punch someone in the nose and hurt them, I know, I know that I've violated a law. It's, it doesn't need to be written down on paper. Anything that's, anything that's written down on paper... Um, you need to do such and such and pay such and such X amount uh, and with penalties and what have you. That's, that's just a bit of paper. It has no, the universe does not acknowledge the paper. You see, so what they've done is they've created a paper world and they've made us believe that, it's, that that is the real world. But it's, it's a system, it's a public and a private system, you see. In the private, you and I, we are men. You're a man, I'm a man. I'm not male and you're not male. Those are designations, those are designations for animals. All right? Masculine, feminine. These are for non-human you know, non entities. You and I are um, men and women are women. They're not female, they're not feminine. Well, they're feminine, <laughs> but they're not female, okay? So, that's for animals. So, um, flesh blood 
lives in the private world, in the real world. This is real. You know, we can touch things. Uh, we don't have to hurt each other. We know that. We, it's, it's natural. It's natural law. We don't have to see a bit of paper that says, you must not punch someone in the nose. Oh, well, shit, really? <laughs> you know, of course not. Uh, and and that's, that's, the, that's the real world. What they've done is they've juxtaposed their paper fictional world, the, the public world, and they've made us believe that the two are exactly the same. Yes, they coexist, but they're not exactly the same. So, so you see, in the natural, private world, we have nature and its laws, and they are not stated on paper. But in the fictional paper world, we have bits of paper, and it's called legislation and enactments and statutes, and all of that, all of those enactments, they own them. It's their intellectual property right, so they are bound by it and not we the people. The employees, the ones that we pay, you see, when you pay your taxes, mm -hmm. you're paying for those public servants to do good things for you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you wouldn't pay them. But what right. do they do? They go and give that money straight to the banks. All taxes go to the banks, by the way, to the IMF. Right. Um, regardless, tobacco, the taxes on petrol and everything like that, it all goes to the banks because we're indebted to them. It does not go to roads. Roads comes from... Yeah, we create the money anyway for, for, for the roads. It's our creation. You see, you see, money does not get created unless we create it. We make it because it's a fictional thing. It doesn't, it, it's just paper. So when you sign for a mortgage, for instance, you're actually signing, you're creating that money it's being it's being put out into the into the into the world you see so the banks does know how that works that we created so so they've they've tricked us into thinking that those little bits of paper are more important than the laws of nature and if we know who we are we will realize immediately that those bits of paper belong to the fictional world and if they want to be paid, well, then we can discharge any debt with a signature because the signature creates the money. <laughs> so Santos, and when you learn how to do that, so there's no more taxes to be paid. So is, the, so is this federal income tax voluntarily? So because it, it, it uh, I mean, one of the things that, that uh, interested me was when I saw a form, you know, you have these forms to fill out when you do these taxes, the California federal... Um, I'm sorry, the California state, they do have a state uh, tax. It's called the California State Franchise Tax. <laughs> and I was wondering, why is that word franchise there? You know, I mean, is California a state? But why, why does it say franchise? I mean, franchise is a, is a, is a company, it's a corporation, right? Or like a McDonald's yeah. franchise. That's right. That's, that's what it is. All states are. They're all registered on the securities stock exchange um, commission in New York and they're all doing business they're trading as businesses and so this is where we need to be very very careful it's not government by the people of the people by the people we're not actually um, paying them anymore to be our servants uh, they are taking us to be their servants because they're businesses now you see, they've morphed into businesses. They always were. It always was like that. The Roman Empire has always been a business. <laughs> of course it is. An empire, well, that's just a, an empire. That's a business. It's not a real thing. That's, it's, it's fictional. It, you know, an empire. Well, who, uh, what is an empire? Where do you go to see the empire? I want, you know, I want to see it. Uh, where do you, it doesn't, you can't see it. It's got a group of people that run it. Well, who are they? They run an empire. You know what I mean? It's a business. Governments and nations and all of these fictional things. We are citizens of the world. The world is free. There's free air. There's free water. There's free everything. 
That's truly how it works. Governments have imposed their will on that natural system. They've perverted that system and they've said, you need us, we're important, so you better pay for us. And, and yet, why do we need them? If we have strong communities which they have destroyed and divided, divide and conquer, if we have strong communities, what do we need? All we need to do is eat, don't we? So if I've got 40 people in a community, this guy grows potatoes, this guy goes, grows um, you know, nuts, um, fruits, vegetables, we've all got stuff growing all the time, right? And someone knows how to make clothes and everything, and we exchange these goods, we can live forever. That's all we need. We, what, uh -huh. Santos, but, but in, all, in all fairness, though, I mean, I mean, it's not easy. First of all, it's not easy to, li to live with people or to deal with people because there's so much differences in, in opinion, in, in character, in addictions and whatever. I mean, how realistic is that, though, Santos, to live in a community? You know, I, I mean, I, I read of a case back in the 60s where they bought a little island uh, in the Pacific, these uh, communists, and they went, they went out to prove that communism and socialism worked. And they bought this little island and they, they you know, uh, uh, three months later, they were all killing each other and it didn't work. Yeah. So, I mean, how, I mean, in theory, that sounds good, Santos, what you're saying. But how practical is that to, to do that? Uh, I mean, I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying is it's it's not easy dealing with people. I mean, I dealt with people when I in my business and and, you know, it's a business and you try to accommodate people and be nice to them. But th there comes a point where you can't, you know, and, and, and you have a certain way of doing things. I have a certain way of doing these things and everyone else. So how so where do we come together? That's the, that's the key. Where do we come together to live in that space that you're talking about? Yeah, that's a good question, you know, because. Um, communities have worked and then other communities have not worked. If they're structured properly and people are mature and responsible and uh, we take the responsibility, there will be hiccups, there will be troubles, of course. You know, they're human nature. We have opinions. We have, but, but, uh, and we all have different ways of doing things. But if we wake up to the fact that big government is so destructive and it's so obvious and we reduce it down, down, down to its bare minimum and we keep that government honest. Governments should only be administrators. They should administer the affairs of the communities. That's all they should be doing. And you pay them in a republic, you pay those officials, those public officials, public servants, and so that they can eat and administer and keep all the affairs. And if there is problems, lawful problems, someone hurt somebody, well, then they need to be taken to a court and they need to uh, compensate for the damage that they've done. That's natural. That's a natural thing. So the communities should provide for that. There should still be, you know, there should still be responsible, um, minimal, 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 uh, I wouldn't call it government, rule the minds, that's what it means, but I would call it administration, minimal administration. Um, you know, and Plato and Thomas More, they all spoke about the republic and how a republic uh, should be uh, administered and how it should operate. And uh, they are far better than, than what democracy offers and big government. Uh, democracy's mob rule. Um, you know, I've got quotes from Thomas Jefferson and, and all sorts of um, wonderful, insightful men that have realised what democracy is. Um, but I'd like to qu uh, read a quote from Howard Zinn. Um, Howard Zinn, in the book Failure to Quit, page 45, said... Civil disobedience is not our problem. Our problem is civil obedience. Our problem is that numbers of people all over the world have obeyed the dictates of the leaders of their government and have gone to war and millions have been killed because of obedience.
Our problem is that people are obedient all over the world in the face of poverty and starvation and stupidity and war and cruelty. Our problem is that people are obedient while the jails are full of petty thieves and while and all the while the grand thieves are running the country. That's our problem. And... Um, Civil disobedience uh, or uh, lawful um, rebellion or what I would prefer, um, peaceful non-compliance, that's our duty. That's our duty. When the governments become corrupt and they are surely, definitely corrupt, you only need you know, one brain cell to be active in your brain to determine that. You can be a retarded gnat. And you can work out that the governments are corrupt. I mean, how dumb down do you have to be to think, oh, Barack Obama is such a nice man and Julia Gillard, they are criminals, absolute criminals. Bernanke, the big news, Brzezinski, um, Henry Kissinger and these types the Federal Reserve, the, all of these institutions, they are putrid to the core, must go. And they will. They'll go. They will be judged and condemned and destroyed and communi the community spirit will rise from the ashes of big government. Mm -hmm. the, the, see, the problem... That's, that, that's, not, empty, that's not empty words. Uh -huh. That's not empty words. That's true prophecy. And, uh, you know, people in government need to take heed of those words real quick. Mm -hmm. Santos, I guess the, the, in, in, uh, going back to, to the federal income tax, uh, I don't know if you saw the documentary by Aaron Russo, American Freedom to Fashion, which I'm going to put up on our channel. Uh, but it, it, I recommend that, that video because that explains in detail how we've been uh, bamboozled in thinking that we have to pay this income tax in the in the income in this movie uh, many people have asked the IRS which is the Internal Revenue Service uh, the branch that collects the independent private branch that collects the taxes from the American people to give them the law that says that an individual has to pay an income tax from his wages and there is no law <laughs> so they, they won't provide no. any law as opposed no, to no what, you, what you're saying, statue, right? A statue is not the same thing as a law, correct? Exactly. A statute is on paper. Paper, it's just a bit of paper. You can wipe your bum with paper. It's handy. Um, one thing I would ask the governments when they ask you to uh, you know, oblige them with their fictional bits of paper and you get a bit of paper in the mail that says you need to pay uh, $5,000 of income tax, I'd ask the question, by what authority do you use that name as personal identification? Because on your birth certificate, your, your corporatized all caps name um, is just a person. It's a legal entity. It's a transmitting utility. It's, a, um, it's just a, a corporation. So... What authority do they have to use that name as personal identification and to pin it on you, a flesh blood man? There's no authority in the universe. So you checkmate them with one question. In court, when you go to court, Mr. Judgy Poos, by what authority does this prosecutor type use that name as personal identification? No one has that authority. No one owns the name. We don't own it. They don't own it. It is a fictional entity. What really exists is your flesh and blood. And your flesh and blood, I, I've, I've never seen a law in the skies or on a rock or anywhere that says you must pay tax. The world, the world of nature has one law. Live free and do not injure. These bits of paper that they send you, and they already tell you on your birth certificate, not to be used as personal identification because it's only a bit of paper. It doesn't identify you as a flesh-blood man. It can't do that. 
So when the when the tax man comes a calling, when a judge or a prosecutor harasses you or anything like that, there's only one question. By what authority do you use that name as personal identification? Because there is no authority and they are committing fraud. You see, you see, you can see this uh, this fraud, uh, Santos. For example, when if let's just say you have a debt with the IRS, uh, what, what's the branch called over there in Australia? Uh, ATO, Australian Tax Office. ATO. Okay, so let's say you owe the ATO a uh, hundred thousand dollars because of back taxes and you haven't paid them. Well, they'll, they'll normally send you a letter, say we're going to levy your wages and blah, 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 blah. And if time goes by and they can't levy your wages, you, you closed all your bank accounts and you, and you, you don't own no property, you know, they'll, they'll send you another letter and say, well, renegotiate your debt and, you know, now you could just pay half of it. So the question is, Santos, if I lend you, you know, if I lend you physical money, uh, $100,000 out of my w w wages and you decide, you know, listen, I'm not going to pay you. Uh, am, am I, would I say to you, Santos, okay, just pay me 50000 You know, Don't pay me the full amount. Hell no. I'm going to say, Santos, you better pay me my full amount that I loaned you. You know, I'm never going to say, give me half of that money. But they do this. They negotiate the debt because they figure, well, this guy is really not going to pay the full amount. So anyway, at least let's collect some money. So that alone should tell you that this is fraud. <laughs> you know, it's a lie. You know. Um, Santos, we're going to take a quick break. Yeah. When we come back, let's uh, keep talking about this issue. That's uh, it's very important uh, for our audience to understand this, not to right away, you know, stop paying your taxes. Because you got to know how to do uh, this process to take care of yourself, so you know they don't throw you in jail. Because they will throw you in jail, and unless you know how to defend yourself, you know you're going to end up losing your shirt. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Okay, uh, and we're back. Uh, we're talking tonight about the federal income tax. Do we have to pay? And uh, we're talking to Santos Bonacci from Australia. Um, uh, Santos, now that um, that that we've uh, we understand a little bit about this this concept that um, you know why should we have to pay? <laughs> 
from our hardworking money. You know, people work hard and, and they have to give up, you know, I don't know what percentage it is over in Australia, but I told you in the United States, it's, it, it goes about 40% of your wages goes to, to pay taxes in addition to other taxes that you pay on food and liquor and gasoline on your property tax, you know, and it just goes on and on and on. And by the end of the week, you're left with probably, you know, 15% or 20% of uh, whatever you earned legally uh, during the week because it all goes to paying taxes. Now, um, if it was a different system where, you know, we paid money, but we saw that money stay within our communities to build, I don't know, schools, to build you know, hospitals or to build uh, infrastructure and to create more jobs for people to educate themselves, I don't know, for whatever. But that's not the case. <laughs> so so it, why is this important for people to understand this fraudulent income tax that they have perpetrated on us in this system? Because at the end of the day, it, it, it boils down to these greedy bankers. It all, it all goes back to them, you know, and yeah. more debt, yeah. more suffering, and people just, you know, don't understand that this is illegal. Is illegal in legally, uh, in in the laws, unlawful as you say it, and that if they understood this, things could change, you know. So, um, the question is, Santos, um, where, how do you begin? What is the first step? in telling someone to understand this, that this is a fraud and that this has no beautiful end results except debt and more debt, Santos. Right. First thing to do is to enlighten people about this subject, not educate them. Educate them is one of their words. Enlightenment has been a word by used by philosophers and great thinkers. Education is used by wannabes, people who believe in dumbing down, being educated. When we enlighten mankind about what's really going on, then people will be able to make their own decision as they get enlightened and as they realize how the system works. I would never be advocating, hey, don't do what I do. I don't pay taxes and I do it in this... Never advocate or tell people what to do. Always, always just enlighten people about the true nature of the situation. It's quite easy. Just a few quotes will suffice. Here's a couple of quotes. Try these, for instance, when you're talking to people over a cup of coffee. Here's um, a letter written by FDR to Colonel House, November 21st, 1933. Colonel House was a very powerful man. He worked with Woodrow Wilson and um, wrote a very, very interesting book, which I have. I forget the title, but I might find it in a minute. Um, the real truth of the matter is, as you and I know, that a financial element in the larger centres has owned the government ever since the days of Andrew Jackson. One quote. Here's Napoleon Bonaparte. We might want to listen to Napoleon Bonaparte. He's kind of like a, you know, a, a man who you might want to pay attention to. Whether you agree with what, how he ruled and how he, how he didn't rule and whatever he did, but he was a famous man of what we might call importance. So we might want to heed what he had to say. This is what he said. When a government is dependent upon bankers for money, they, and not the leaders of the government, control the situation. Since the hand that gives is above the hand that takes, money has no motherland. That's why the Swiss bankers, they live on their run, little estate there in Switzerland, the land of the sisters, Schwesterland, because they are the sisters of Isis, the corrupt Amun-Ra priesthood who deals in money. That's why they have a neutral country where they live and they can't be attacked. And Switzerland is neutral because Switzerland and the banksters own the whole creepy system. And Napoleon Bonaparte, he knew it. Financiers are without patriotism and without decency. 
the sole object is gain. Encyclopedia Britannica, 14th edition. Banks create credit. It is a mistake to suppose that bank credit is created to any extent by the payment of money into the banks. A loan made by a bank is a clear addition to the amount of money in the community. Um, here's another one. And to the money elite plutocracy of his time, Jackson further said, this is Andrew Jackson, gentlemen, I have bad men, I have bad men watching you for a long time and I'm convinced that you have used the funds of the bank to speculate in the breadstuffs of the country. When you won, you divided the profits among you. And when you lost, you charged it to the bank. You tell me that if I take the deposits from the bank and annul its charter, I shall ruin 10,000 families. That may be true, gentlemen, but that is your sin. Should I let you go on, you will ruin 50,000 families. And that would be my sin. And you are a den of vipers and thieves. He was talking to the banks. Um, I can go on. Thomas Jefferson. The central bank is an institution of the most deadly hostility existing against the principles and form of your constitution. I am an enemy to all banks, discounting bills or notes for anything but coin. If the American people allow private banks to control the issuance of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and corporations that grew up around them will deprive the people of all their property until their children will wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. Here's uh, Congressman Charles A. Lindenberg in 1923. He said, from now on, depressions will be scientifically created. Depressions don't happen. They never happen. They are scientifically created. By who? By those greedy den of vipers and thieves that Andrew Jackson, Jackson and Thomas Jefferson and Napoleon and Colonel House denounced. Now, I've got a whole bunch more quotes. I've got a, But this is how we can enlighten mankind, to let them know that the hidden hand behind the government is the banks. It's pretty simple. It's not a, you know, like the Wizard of Oz, there's, you know, don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. The men behind the curtain are creepy, slimy vultures, leeches, parasites, vermin. They are animalistic, unconscious imbeciles, and they create wars so that their military industrial complex, they create the concept of paying taxes to them and they are behind all the poisonous, atrocious actions that we see on the secular plane. They must go. They're parasites. What do you do with parasites? You kill them. They've got to go into jail, into FEMA concentration camps, guillotines, gallows, electric chairs, whatever is suitable, Nuremberg style. Santos, and I'd like to add, add a, a, a phrase to, uh, from our, our good friend uh, Rothschild who said, give me control of the money and I care now who makes the laws, right? So they control the, the money system, they can care less and people just continue to have this illusion that they have laws and, and you know, their taxes are going to, their, to, to, to fix the roads and, uh, you know, that, that how else are we going to support the system if we don't pay taxes? You know, it's all, it's all an illusion that... that that we live in, you know, it is, as, as it, I, I just remember George Carlin and his, his, the late George Carlin, and he said, you know, they give us this illusion that we have choices, you know, they give us Coca-Cola, Pepsi, you know, McDonald's, Burger King, you know, it's just illusion, but Democrat and Republicans, you know, we have this illusion that we have choices, but with the stuff that really hurts us, you know, they'll give us choices like, you know, a hundred different kinds of cigarettes, you know, a thousand different kind of liquor, you know, all kinds of uh, drugs, medicines that, you know, take uh, for your headache. They'll give us choices there, you know, Th stuff that, that hurts us, but not the stuff that has meaning. Um, so um, what, what would be, Santos, the, the first step 
Um, I know you've said before, uh, you know, to understand what the birth certificate is in one of our other shows, in many of the other shows, but but with this in particular, to the, to the federal income tax or to the income tax, how do we free ourselves from not having to be liable to pay for this income tax, this federal income tax, without having to go to jail. <laughs> that's that's the key, because many people know about this, but they're afraid. They're afraid. They say, you know what? I know this is illegal. I know it's costing me a lot of money, but you know what? I don't want to go to jail. So, Well, it's like this, Johnny. They will continue then, if they have fear, they will continue to pay those taxes until such time as it hurts them so much that they will lose the